you want me to tell you a secret? It's not really a secret. But uh, your intellectual property is uh, worthless. You uh, might be the CTO of an organization who have been uh, having dozens of software developers, having uh, smashed at uh, your code for decades. And you've been paying these people millions of dollars in salary in total. Yet still, somehow, magically, the result of what they gave you is worthless. <laughs> and I can prove it uh, using an example from uh, my own life. You see, I used to work for Forex companies. It was kind of like the only software development job that was really available here in Cyprus. Because Cyprus happens to be the Forex Wall Street of the world. And uh, there are 243 Forex brokers in uh, Cyprus. Those are only the registered brokers. In addition, there are the unregistered brokers or unlicensed brokers, <laughs> which are kind of like criminals. But uh, I've been working for five of these companies. And uh, <clears throat> Every company I've worked for, our forex brokers, have garbage code. I don't mean bad code, I mean fucking junk work. I mean garbage. I wouldn't steal it if you offered me money and put a gun to my head. Yet still, somehow, all of these forex brokers believe that their code is valuable. They have dozens of software developers smashing at this code, non-stop. To show you why the code is worthless, let me, let me explain what the code does. So, it's basically the same code in every single forex broker. You need a dashboard where your traders can log in, in case you get authentication and authorization. Then you need a registration endpoint. If you're fancy, maybe you want to use like OpenID Connect, but in fact, most of them don't can't even figure out OpenID Connect. So they have their own usernames and passwords. And uh, then you are accessing your dashboard where you can see your trading account, um, uh, how much money you have in your trading account. And then you can deposit using some sort of payment provider. All of them are supporting multiple payment providers, typically some five, six, seven different payment providers because different payment providers works in different countries. That allows them to deposit. A payment provider is basically like Stripe, right? You can pay money. And then they have a, a form for withdrawal requests. And every single time you withdraw or you pay, you increase or deduct money from the trading. And then you have MT4 or MT5 or C Trader or something like that. That's basically everything the freaking thing do. Okay, sure, it's got an endpoint where you can upload KYC documents and, you know, take a test to verify if you're smart enough to be allowed to do Forex uh, trading, which is a regulation requirement. But I mean, the problem is literally so simple that I can sum it up with one sentence or at least one paragraph. And I've been working for companies that had 30 software developers working full time, trying to maintain their existing uh, rubbish code. I used to work for one company, it was a big company. This was owned by, you know, a guy who owned serious banks and I've made hundreds of millions of dollars on banking. And 25% uh, of deposit attempts would fail because of race conditions. I tried to fix the race condition. I was able to, to fix most of it because there were many. 
But I begged my CTO, please, 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 let me recreate this one. But I was never allowed. The funny thing is I, I could recreate it in less than a week. I'd have the entire platform. Maybe not the front end, but definitely the back end. And a hundred million times more better back end. Literally in a week, I'm not kidding. Yet still, somehow, all of these CTOs would look at their Git uh, repository and see all the files and all the lines of code and they'd be like, ooh, this has to be worth something. You know, one of the reasons that I open source license magic cloud, you find a link to it in the description, was that uh, I wanted to prove to the world that IP isn't worth anything, IP is worthless. Now, the best analogy I can think about to illustrate that point. So imagine you go to your imbecile uh, neighbor, who's got like 75 in IQ, and you tell him, wow, dude, Einstein just figured out that E equals MC squared. That means we can take matter and turn it into energy. How do you think your neighbor is going to react? All right, he's probably going to have some sort of like fermentation of uh, the who the fuck cares, I've got beers to drink. Now, then you go to Oppenheimer and you tell him the same. And 10 years later, you have a nuclear bomb. And you're the most powerful nation on earth. You see, IP and knowledge in the hands of uh, the ignorant is useless. You can literally take everything I've created almost in my entire life. You can fork it, clone it. You can create a copy of my company and start competing with me selling AI chatbots. And you can do it for free. I've given you all the code you need to do that. Yet still somehow, I've not seen a single competitor surface. You want to know why? Because I create that, my IP. So I know how to leverage it. So regardless of how much time somebody spends studying my open source code, inevitably at some point in time, they are going to reach a point where they can no longer serve you or support you, which point their only option is going to be to contact me. And if they're on a competitor of me, of course, I'm going to be charging $500 per hour to help them, right? So, IP, intellectual property, is worthless. My IP is only worth anything at all because I'm there to support it and configure it and set it up correctly. And by the way, my code is not junk. Contrary to that forex crap I told you about five minutes ago. Now, what does that teach? What lesson can you deduct from that fact? Well, you can shift delete your code. Worthless, anyway, right? And the statistical probability of that your code is junk is approximately 100% especially if you are working for an enterprise software development company. A company basically having software development as a secondary function exclusively uh, there to support their primary function, such as insurance companies, bank, trading companies, and forex companies. Right. That means I can go into any one of these companies and I can replace their entire platform in, in weeks. And they'd have a more scalable platform with less bugs, more easily maintained because it would be 20% of the code base, because Hyper Lambda is 20% as verbose as their existing programming language, etc, etc, etc. But people have difficulties doing that, because they're looking at their code. They're looking at their existing investments and they're telling themselves comfortable lies, allowing them to face themselves in the mirror on a daily basis. And the lies are, oh, this code is worth a lot. 
Well, it's magic, guys. Right? It's a million times more complex than anything you participated in in your entire life. It's entirely open source. If code has value, then why is there only one? I need a company enough. Have a nice day.